So I recently co-authored a book chapter that's publishing today with Professor Frank Tewitt, and the title of it is Decolonizing Academic Spaces, Moving Beyond Diversity to Promote Racial Equity in Post-Secondary Education. I'm going to read you um, just an excerpt. So open quote, recognizing that the higher education institutions we work for were not designed to liberate racial and ethnic minorities, but arguably to control the mind so that it could exploit the body for profit. We take the position that it would be virtually impossible then to decolonize academic institutions in their entirety. Moreover, it is important to acknowledge the privileged space that we occupy as academics who get to engage in intellectual discourse and exercises such as this, where we write about what ought to be done in the name of promoting racial equity while simultaneously remaining complicitly by participating in and benefiting from the very systems and structures we seek to dismantle. So we must remember that if we are not critically vigilant in our efforts to interrogate or emancipatory actions or good intentions can result in oppressive outcomes themselves. Therefore, scholar activists seeking to decolonize academic spaces, the curriculum and pedagogy to promote more racial and ethnic equity and inclusion we want to focus on decolonizing aspects of the academic enterprise within their spheres of influence. So my colleague and I, we argue that three of the four frames discussed in this work relate to decolonizing the mind, decolonizing pedagogy, and decolonizing academic programs is probably a good place to start. For the purposes of this conversation and this welcome opening this morning, I'll just focus on decolonizing pedagogy. Heavily related to decolonizing the mind, decolonizing pedagogy is the manner in which we teach challenges those of us adhering to a decolonized ideology to constantly battle and wade through the colonial lecture styles, waves of disseminating knowledge. In this respect, some faculty teach as an extension of the self through a lens in which refract and receive knowledge as a two-way reciprocal process, never a one directional way. Some decolonizing pedagogues borrow from the philosophies of critical pedagogy, inclusive pedagogy, revolutionary pedagogy, critical rage pedagogy, to create more decolonized academic spaces for teaching and learning to occur. These, and these learning environments, therefore, are inherently become inclusive, more dialogical, and more discursive. These spaces, we argue, are able to center the peripheries of knowing and generate knowledge from a non-white, non-Western scholars. Here, pedagogy is filled with passion, rage, fear, anger, love for the art of teaching. Those wishing to engage in decolonizing pedagogy, we ask that they consider the following. One, teach with intentionality, making pedagogical decisions from the core of your authentic self focusing on liberation and ultimate emancipation of the mind and the self. Two, leverage your students as well as your own voice and lived experiences through indigenous ways of knowing to co-construct knowledge and co-construct the learning environment space. Three, diversify course content based on each cohort of students. Review and assess who is privileged on the syllabus, and those that are recommended for readings. Educators should prioritize a balanced portrayal of ethnic and racial diverse groups of scholars. Constant four, const it might be at four, yes. Constantly engage in the self-work to be an anti-oppressionist and equity-minded educator that uses decolonizing practices and strategies to encourage students to not just reflect, but how to act. And then lastly, be courageous, resilient, and embrace the emotional labor required for decolonizing pedagogy. These considerations are not exhaustive and should be challenged and enhanced based on the context, the region, and where you plan to implement the learning environment and the students in the classroom space. The constant reflexive process of engaging in decolonizing pedagogy allows educators to develop as leaders and form communities of persons aspiring to decolonize academic programs, end quote. So to close, when education was philosophically understood as fitting for a society, 
What that essentially meant was that education was expected to create a local citizen for society structured along the supply chain, supply chains of a plantation economy. If we are to truly remove ourselves from these supply chains, we must be willing to demand more for ourselves and our colleagues and comrades to decolonize not only the university, but the larger macro systems they reinforce and mimic. Thank you.